CC, former chief business officer at Uber, former VP of Amazon, and former SEC chair on their legal team, Ripple. Now, I cannot personally confirm this myself, but many people are saying that the FedNow service is actually being built with Ripple, XRP technology as its foundation. Who's a member of the Digital Pound Foundation, Digital Dollar Project, Ripple. All right, what up, YouTube? When you guys watch this video, it is going to blow your mind. What XRP is putting in place as far as a central bank digital currency or starting to build the payment rails for a global payment settlement layer, what that would actually mean for us as a civilization, I don't think it could get much worse. If there is ever a point in time where we, as the people, need to draw a line in the sand, this is it, guys. A central bank digital currency would be the absolute worst thing that can happen to human civilization. So everybody out there really needs to think about what they are actually investing in. When it comes to XRP and Ripple, what are you supporting? Let me show you the people that are involved in this project. And then think about why you're most likely living paycheck to paycheck. Why inflation is crushing your savings account. Why you're maxing out credit cards. And why are you working two jobs and you can barely afford to put a roof over your head? It's because a core group, the wealthiest and the elite people around the world, decided that they wanted to control the money printer. So at any time, if they need more money or their government wants to spend more money, they crank up the money printer, they give the wealthiest rich people around the world that are already taxing you 30 to 50% a year. They're taking 30 to 50% of, of what you make out of every paycheck. And then we have 10 to 20% inflation on average on a global scale. And that's their numbers. Those aren't even the real numbers. So think about those are the people, right? the central bankers, the government officials, the treasury secretaries. These are the most elite, powerful people in the world, and they are the reason that we are in this position today. And now you wanna give them more power and help support a central bank digital currency? It blows my mind. Let's dive deep into this article by Max Keisner, where he calls out the SEC for not properly charging XRP with charges that they could not argue around. Now, I don't know if that's true. This is all speculative and this is just allegedly what we hear that xrp is working on being that border rails or the payment rail for a central bank digital currency you today xrp community riled up by bitcoiner max keisner comments on sec lawsuit details in a recent tweet bitcoiner max keisner urges the sec to argue what he calls an unlawful inductment to the sale of unregistered securities referring to xrp Keisner referred to a video posted by an XRP user regarding the motivation behind holding XRP. The well-known altcoin critic called XRP centralized and urges the SEC's chair Gary Gensler to take action against it. The at SEC can argue, and they should, that XRP video is an unlawful inductment into the sell of an unregistered securities. 15 seconds into it, XRP admits it's centralized for one thing. The list of actionable violations is long. Hashtag lock them up, Gary. So first I wanna let this clip play, and I want you to understand the people that are involved in this. I want you to listen to all the names and their credibility and what these elite people that are involved in the Ripple project what they have done to this country on a global scale. They're the ones who have been in control of the money printers. They worked at Federal Reserve. They worked with governments. They worked as treasury secretaries for the United States government. And then after this, we're gonna dive into a clip by Joe Brown. We're gonna talk about central bank digital currencies and why they're the antichrist. And then we're gonna dive into some XRP price predictions. Why do I hold XRP? Because Ripple's the chosen one to lead the new global digital payment system, and they use XRP. In 2013, the Federal Reserve began looking for faster payments options. Two years later, an action plan was born and a federal payments task force was created. It included one company focused on crypto, Ripple. In 2014, the World Bank and Better Than Cash Alliance, which includes the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Clinton Global Initiative, and the governments of 32 countries put out a report called the Opportunities of Digitizing Payments. One year later, the Better Than Cash Alliance featured one crypto company on their website, Ripple. Today, Better Than Cash Alliance and all other UN initiatives are focused on a single agenda, the Sustainable Development Goal for 2030. You can see the SDGs logo on Bill Gates' lapel, world-leading companies, the Better Than Cash Alliance website, and on the UN's official exchange, Exchange. What crypto is Exchange officially utilizing
pricing for their carbon credit solution, XRP. The world will move to a new international standard for exchanging electronic messages between financial institutions by 2025 called ISO 2022. Who is the first ISO 2022 member focused on distributed ledger technology? Ripple, who's partnered with over 300 financial institutions including Bank of America, American Express, PNC, Santander, SBI, HSBC, Standard Chartered Bank, Bank of England, India, Singapore, Scotland, Australia, and Indonesia, the largest banks in Japan, Canada, Egypt, the Middle East, United Arab Emirates, Thailand, Morocco, Bhutan, South Korea, Brazil, and Latin America? Ripple, who is a former employee overseeing the Federal Reserve? Ripple, a former employee overseeing the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock's Digital Asset Division? Ripple, leading Australia's CBDC effort? Ripple, who hired a former Treasury of the United States? Ripple, two former Federal Reserve attorneys to their board? Ripple, two former Clinton and Obama advisors, former Minister of Defense and Economics of Germany, former Business Director at SWIFT, former SWIFT board member, former CFO of PayPal, former head of the DTCC, former Chief Business Officer at Uber, former VP of Amazon, and former SEC Chair on their legal team? Ripple, who's a member of the Digital Pound Foundation, Digital Dollar Project, Digital Euro Association, Mojaloop, IMF's High Level Advisory Board on FinTech, Hyperledger Blockchain Consortium, Open Payments Coalition, Faster Payments Council, Global Payments Steering Group, Cross Border Working Group, International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications, Crypto Climate Accord, University Blockchain Initiative, World Wide Web Consortium, and a featured partner of the World Economic Forum with three members of their team directly listed on the WF website, Ripple. Now, does Ripple and XRP sound like they're going to disappear, or do they sound like they're part of a much bigger plan? You decide. So let me ask you the question, why did you start investing in cryptocurrency? Obviously to make profits, right? Because you wanted to be able to pass wealth down to your family. You want to be able to pass wealth onto your kids, onto your kids' kids, onto your kids' kids, 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 kids. We the people, we the people need to start having a serious conversation about what is money. If you haven't saw my Neil Oliver, what is money whiteboard animation video, please take eight minutes out of your life and watch this video. It's going to change your entire outlook on what is money. We as the people need to start having a serious conversation about how banks work, about what central banks are, and we need to understand what ramifications would come from something like this actually playing out. So I want you to listen to this video with me really quick from Joe Brown about central bank digital currencies. Ready? Let's get it. Are you ready for a central bank digital currency here in the States? Well, regardless of whether you're ready or not, the Federal Reserve has announced that next July in 2023, they will be launching the Fed Now service, which will be the infrastructure for the American American CBDC. Now, I cannot personally confirm this myself, but many people are saying that the FedNow service is actually being built with Ripple XRP technology as its foundation, which would make sense because you would want to co-opt, you'd want to adopt an existing technology. You have a bunch of PhDs in economics that can't see the forest for the trees, so you're not going to use them to build out a technological infrastructure for a new banking system. You're just going to to use something that's already in existence that you can control, which may be why XRP was handled so thoroughly and so severely by the SEC way back when. Now, just in case it isn't clear, this infrastructure bypasses a lot of the need for the current banking infrastructure, which is the purpose of a central bank digital currency. Eventually, every single economic participant has an account directly with the Federal Reserve, the central bank, and then you don't need any of the decentralized nodes of a financial system, the existing or the previously existing banks. This transforms the purpose of the entire banking system really into infrastructure for the CBDC. Rather than having the central bank just operate as the bank for the other banks, it really does centralize everything under one roof. And once that system is built, once all the kinks are worked out of the system and once they've been able to figure out everything that's wrong with it and roll it out successfully, then they will have the foundation in place to build the Gen 2, the version 2 CBDC on top of it. The only thing that would be left to do would be to have everybody open an account directly with the Fed. So why do it this way and why do it so slowly and do it in a way where you're rolling out technology that builds the foundation but doesn't necessarily roll out the full CBDC itself? Well, because you can't boil a frog fast. You've got to do it slowly. So they've got to do this piece by piece where every single step along the way doesn't itself look like something like a power grab, doesn't look like something where they're trying to gain a foothold for the future CBDC. Otherwise, 
everyone would reject it. Everyone in the right minds would look at this thing and say, absolutely not. And number two, the reason is because, well, it would actually just fail. They're a bunch of idiots. They don't know how to roll something out this complex at the scale that they would need to without falling flat on their face. So they've got to do this in baby steps and make sure each step works along the way. But make no mistake, a central bank digital currency is coming and it looks like this new FedNow service is just the launch of the infrastructure for launching the full version of the CBDC later on. And if this is true, it means that we are inching our way closer and closer to the need to get some of your wealth outside of the banking system because by the time a CBDC is launched and they have full control of transactions, it will probably be number one, more important to have wealth outside of the system, but number two, too late to actually get it out. Everybody can see what is going on with our neighbors up north right now, despite the media's attempt at distracting people from it. And even though many hoped that elected officials would come to their senses about tyranny, instead they voted in favor of what could turn out to be the beginning of their end. Because systems cannot support the weight of tyranny. And everyone who can is right now attempting to get their wealth out. And that is the key. Right now, some of the wealth still has a chance to escape because today, complete financial repression is not possible. But all of that changes with a central bank digital currency, a CBDC. So in this video, I'm going to explain very simply exactly what a central bank digital currency is, why governments so desperately want it, and every way that it is very different from the system we have today, terrifyingly different. Because a CBDC grants totalitarian control to anybody who wields it. And as the Rothschild said, let me control a nation's money and I do not care who writes the laws. Ready? Let's dive in. Brief history. Banks started off as gold vaults. You stored your gold with the bank and you could go get your gold with the receipt or you could use the receipt itself as money. That works great until the bank commits fraud and loans out your gold to somebody else. You go and try and get your gold, guess what? It's no longer there. Bank run occurs, bank collapses. This should have been outlawed, instead it was nationalized with the invention of the central bank in order to prevent a local bank from collapsing when it commits fraud, might as well create a bank of the banks, a bank account where banks can store some gold so that the bank isn't susceptible to a bank run if they get a bank run because of fraud and lending out the gold that was your gold they can just go and get some extra gold from the central bank but you can't eliminate risk you can only transfer it and instead of this risk that was isolated to individual banks now it had been transferred to the entire banking system fast forward a couple hundred years it had been centralized even more and the federal reserve was the central bank of the entire world and just as had always happened throughout history, more receipts were issued, more claims on the gold was issued, then there was gold to back it up and the rest of the world went and started a bank run on the United States, the Federal Reserve, and said, give us our gold that you promised us. And in 1971, Nixon said, nah, we're gonna keep it. Now we live under a fiat currency system where governments can create as much currency as they want with no restraints on anything physical like gold. However, the banking system is built on hundreds of years of legacy systems and systems that are in place that were built on real restraints. As if the currency is actually backed up by something. As if banks actually need reserves. As if banks won't get a bailout from the money printer next time they need it. Your money is held digitally on a bank's balance sheet as if there's something actually there. As if it is more than just ones and zeros on a computer. As if they take your actual money and when somebody needs a loan, they lend it out. Newsflash, they don't. Banks lend money into existence. Every loan they make is money that did not exist before. This system is bad. This system is fragile. This system accelerates the concentration of wealth. It transfers wealth from the savers to the borrowers. And as bad as a system as this is, a central bank digital currency is exponentially worse. Not only is it worse, it is categorically different. And it is where we as people need to draw the line in the sand. Now, 
All lines are arbitrary in some sense, but if this one is crossed, most likely the only way out or back out of it is with complete systemic collapse. Remember how I said in the past, you gave your gold to the bank and the bank had its own gold account with the central bank? It's the same today, although not with gold. You have an account with your bank and the bank still has an account with the central bank. A central bank digital currency, on the other hand, bypasses, nationalizes, restructures, and renders obsolete the current traditional banking system. Every individual and every business will have a wallet or an account directly with the central bank. Instead of opening up your Chase app or your Bank of America app, you'll open up your Fed Wallet app. Now, why is this so radically different and so intensely dangerous? Because the central bank maintains a legal monopoly on the creation and the destruction of a nation's currency. Now, that power is already the most dangerous power on earth today. Pair that with the ability to directly control every transaction and account of every individual and business concentrated and isolated among a couple dozen unelected ivory tower bureaucrats. I cannot express enough how terrified everybody in the world should be of this. The entire purpose of a central bank digital currency is to give more control over how much money exists and exactly where that money exists. This money is programmable to allow a level of fine tuning and scalpel-like economic policy making at a degree never before seen. Right now, the central bank has to rely on bank lending and government deficit spending in order to insert new dollars into the economy. They have very little control control over where those dollars end up. It's a sledgehammer approach. A central bank digital currency allows them to control that down to the penny. They could hypothetically give everybody a stimulus check that expires in one month in order to boost spending this month and hold off a recession. They could get everyone a food bonus, money that can only be spent at a grocery store who also has a wallet open with the Fed. They could hypothetically limit how many dollars you spend at a gas station during a specific time frame like a month if gas is getting too expensive or if gas supplies are running low. They could overnight shut off any person's ability to make any transactions whatsoever if you were deemed a criminal or dangerous or a terrorist. They could deposit dollars in your account that could only be spent on stocks if the stock market was crashing. They could prevent transactions like buying specific stocks if that stock looks to them like it's in a bubble. Right now, our neighbors up north are seeing their banks turn into the muscle for the state. The state is relying on brother versus brother, private business versus citizens. And right now, it seems pretty effective. Now imagine if a couple dozen unelected ivory tower bureaucrats can do all of this with a few strokes of the keyboard. No international wires, no usage of an ATM, no more approved business licenses without an account at the Fed, no more buying from any businesses unless you use your CBDC. And once this starts, you can see, you can imagine now how difficult it is to get out of this, to undo this, to backpedal and move out. You won't be able to use your CBDC to buy any gold. You won't be able to use any to buy Bitcoin. You won't be able to transfer any of your wealth out to make an investment in a different country in order to purchase citizenship by investment. You won't be able to rely on it in times of crisis to buy an airplane ticket out of the country or at least to specific countries. All in the name of economic stability. All in the name of preventing money laundering. All in the name of national security. All of this in reality accomplishing the death of democracy and the fatality of freedom. A central bank digital currency is where I draw the line because anybody who crosses it may not be able to cross it back. Start getting your wealth out of the system right now while you can because as we speak today, there are people who said that could never happen here and they woke up and they realized it did. Links for resources in the description below. As always, thank you for watching. So hopefully you guys understand the ramifications of what would come if XRP succeeded and they were able to onboard or create a payment rails for a central bank digital currency. It would be the end of freedom. It would be the end of democracy. You would lose all voting power. You would lose all power together. I strongly suggest that you guys do research and you guys understand what type of assets that you're supporting. Out of all the coins, Dogecoin, Memecoins, Shiba, like out of all the coins that people can support, 
I think that this is where we draw the line in the sand. For personally, if you gave me a million XRP, I would sell it, I would take that million dollars, and then I would probably short it. I would scale into the world's largest short on XRP. Gosh, damn, man, like what are people thinking? I don't know, guys. Drop some comments below. Let's do some price predictions on XRP. So if you guys watched my last XRP price prediction video on where I was saying to short XRP, it was Johnny on the spot, right? We scaled into shorts up here on XRP, shorted it all the way down, took profits, and now it's pushing back up. So this is going to be perfect because XRP has such a massive market cap that it always runs up, stalls, shorting opportunity. So I like XRP because I love to short it and it's such a great asset. All the moon boys gas it up. They always say it's never coming back down and we just short it back down to nothing. So on this next leg up, we have two key areas of resistance. We have resistance at 71 cents and then we also have resistance again up here at 91 cents. So Fibonacci is calling for a price upwards of 66 cents to 73 cents. I think that's a very, very realistic target based off of the previous move from where it's so from retrace down down to 42 cents all the way back up to 73 cents would be a 72 percent run up from its cycle low which i think would be a great opportunity to be shorting xrp if we jump over here on the four hour time frame very very rare do you see in a bear market a asset blow out of the top of the four hour and then immediately try to do it again so if you get a double top on the four hour time frame for rsi to me that becomes the holy grail of shorting opportunities and that's where i'd be betting big not necessarily saying ripple is going back down all the way down to 21 cents I, or 31 cents i don't think that that's going to happen because it's too moon boyed up i'm just praying that the sec wins their lawsuit i really am that's it i hope they win it i hope they crush xrp and i hope they crush everything else that looks like xrp or has anything to do with a central bank digital currency but then I think big picture is XRP, is this all just a ploy? Is this all just a smoke and mirrors routine to try to make it look like the SEC lost against XRP so that every other cryptocurrency can be deemed a security, but XRP is gonna skate out because they are in bed with the Federal Reserves and global banking sectors and everything like that. I mean, so let me ask you this, if you're watching this video and you actually own XRP, why? If you win on that bet, because that's what investing is, is you're betting on something to win. If you bet on XRP to win, do you understand how expensive everything's gonna be around you? Do you understand the control that you're going to be giving to governments? So you're gonna win, what, a few thousand dollars? And the end result is that you now need to generate an extra few thousand dollars a month to live? Gosh, dang, man, that's crazy. Drop some comments below, guys.